Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your dive CD lessons. First, work the problems with me. Work every single problem that I work and take notes on everything that I write on the board. One thing I encourage you to do is on the first practice problem, work that one with me, but then for the second and subsequent ones, pause the CD, try to work the problem on your own, then fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, you can move on to the next one. If you got it wrong, rewind the CD, look at how to pro solve the problem, and figure out how to do it correctly. Next, anytime you need to, pause and rewind the CD until you understand that particular concept. The ability to pause and rewind so easily is what makes dive CD lessons so much better than a live classroom lecture, so make sure and take advantage of that technology. Next, remember the purpose of math is to teach you to think and to solve problems, to effectively and efficiently think and solve problems. In the lower math levels, there's lots of mental math. In the upper levels especially, this is the most important purpose of math, is to teach you to think and to solve problems. Next, do all of the problems in the problem sets. It depends on the course that you're doing, but typically you'll do three to five problem sets a week, so that means three to five CD lessons plus a test. Next, work the homework problems and your test problems too. Work those vertically. Split your paper in two and work them vertically. And of course, make sure you show your work on your problems too. As you work them vertically, write each step down and write each subsequent step underneath the previous one. And this will help you sometimes to recognize patterns a little bit easier and help you solve the problem better. Also use a calculator sparingly, only for geometry problems and some word problems. Don't use it for math 7, 6 or below that for, for any of that. Algebra half and up, use it sparingly. And lastly, have a good attitude. Every day you do school, you have a choice to make. It is your personal choice to have a good attitude, work hard, do your best, or to be lazy, complain, whine, and have a bad attitude. So choose right now to have a good attitude. Dive in, take advantage of this CD lesson, and do your best to learn the math that you're going to learn today. Lesson 1 has several parts, and we'll be discussing some review of whole number place value, expanded notation, reading and writing of whole numbers, and then also addition. Well, first let's discuss whole number place value. And before we get into that, let's just start with counting numbers. Now, when we talk about numbers, we use what's called the Hindu Arabic system to write our numbers. The symbols that we use to identify a number, that's based on the Hindu Arabic system. And so like for counting numbers, when we want to identify the number one, we use this symbol here. And then two, three, four, and so on. Now I'm sure you're familiar with how to write numbers, but maybe you just don't remember that that's called the Hindu Arabic system. And each of those numerals there in the counting numbers, notice that we start with one. Counting numbers, you can think of those as numbers that you can count with your finger. So you can start with one finger, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And the dots at the end there, that means that you continue on. So counting numbers, it's like a group of numbers. It starts with one and it continues on. Whole numbers are real similar to counting numbers, except they start with zero. And then they continue on, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That's the only difference, really, between whole numbers and counting numbers, is that whole numbers, that group of numbers, if you were saying define the set or group of whole numbers, you'd start with 0 instead of with 1, like you do with counting numbers. Now, let's think about a larger number, like 527. Now, each of those digits or numerals, it has a particular value to it to make us say that that is equal to 527. And that's what we mean by place value. And I've got that diagram up there that starts with a decimal point on the right and then a 1 in blue, then a 10, 100 as you read to the left. Those are the whole number place values. And you can see like in 527, the 7 that I'm underlining in red, that one would go in the ones place or the units place it's also called. The two would go in the tens place and the five would go in the hundreds place. 
So when we talk about place value, we're talking about what value that particular place has. So five, that really has a value of 500 because it's in the hundreds place. Two has a value of 20 because it's in the tens place. Seven has a value of seven because it's in the ones place. Now let's just read through these different place values from right to left and I'll start with the decimal point and you'll be able to tell where I am because I'll put a little red mark above it. So here's the decimal point and then here's the ones, the tens, the hundreds place, the one thousands, the ten thousands, the hundred thousands place, the one millions, the ten millions, the hundred millions place, the one billions, the ten billions, the hundred billions place, and then the one trillions, the ten trillions, and the hundred trillions place. Did you notice how they went in groups of ones, tens, hundreds? And each group of three like that was separated by a comma. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, comma, and so on. That makes it fairly easy to remember your place values when you remember that they go in groups of three like that, of ones, tens, hundreds. It will be important for you to know each of those place values that I have on the board there. And a good way to remember things like that is to write them down. Remember, that's what you're supposed to do when you do these lessons, is you're supposed to write down everything that I write down. So you should have that chart that I have, and you could also fill in the blanks that I have left blank as well. Let's talk a little bit more about expanded notation. We talked about it a little bit already when we were talking about that number 527. Let's just use a little bit bigger number like 3,418. And you would write that, or you could write that, in expanded notation. And what that means is you just apply a value to each digit in that number. For example, the 3 is in the thousands place. So we would say that that is equal to 3 times 1,000. Or you could just write 3,000 down. And then to that we would add the 4, which is in the hundreds place, which would be 4 times 100. And then the 1 is in the tens place, so we would just say 1 times 10. And then the 8 is in the ones place, so we would just say 8 times 1 for the ones place. So that's what 3,418 would look like in expanded notation. And if you add all those together, 3,000 plus 400 is 3,400. And then plus 10, that's 3,410 plus 8, that gives you 3,418. So basically we're applying a value to each digit in that number. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems now. Look at practice problem A and B, and notice there's a blue 6 as a digit in both of those numbers. I want you to tell me what value that blue 6 has in each of those numbers. So all you need to do is just count your place values, and you start at the right, like in the practice problem A, you'd say ones, tens, hundreds. That blue six is in the hundreds place, and so it has a value of 600, or six times 100. And so we can just write six times 100, or just 600 for its value. Now, you pause the CD and try to figure out B, and then turn the CD back on, see if you got it right. So for B, we just count over again to the blue six, and we have ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So now the six is in the hundred thousands place. So that means it's six times one hundred thousand, or six hundred thousand. And so that's what we would say the value of the 6 is in practice problem B. Now in practice problem C, I want you to write that in expanded notation. And so you just need to understand your place values to do these correctly. So the 2, that's in the 10 thousands place. And so we would say, I'll put an equal sign here, 2 times 10 thousand. And then I'll put parentheses around each particular value for each digit. And then plus 
3 times 1,000 plus 5 times 100 and then the 4 is in the tens place so we'll say plus 4 times 10 and then plus 7 times 1 because it's in the ones place and so that would be the expanded notation now in the answer key you could that's just probably how they'll have the answer in the answer key but you could write it just 20,000 plus 3,000 plus 500 plus 40 plus 7 I mean that's okay to write it like that as well look at practice problem D now let's go the other way let's take this expanded notation and write it as we normally write a whole number and so let's just start reading the problem from left to right and so we see we have a six to start out with that's in the hundred thousands place and so we'd write six down and then we'd expect the ten thousands place to be next but we have five times a thousand we're talking about that five being in the thousands place we don't have anything here for the ten thousands place so that means there's nothing in the ten thousands place and what digit do you use to describe nothing that would be a zero right and so we would just put a zero in the ten thousands place a five in the thousands place a two in the hundreds place a one in the tens and an eight in the ones six hundred and five thousand two hundred and eighteen so when you don't have a particular place value represented that means there's nothing for that place value or a zero goes there zero is the digit that we use to describe nothing in mathematics now let's go on to part C of this lesson and it's about reading and writing whole numbers. Now one important thing to remember on reading and writing whole numbers is that the numbers from 21 to 99 when you write those down using words you write them with a hyphen in between each word. So like 21 you would say 20 hyphen 1 99 you would say 90 hyphen 9 those are the only numbers that you put a hyphen in between the words from 21 to 99 or you could also think of it as between 20 and 100 so there are no other times when you use hyphens when you're writing a number out using words another thing to remember is that for example if you had 1247 if you wanted to write that out using words you would put a comma in your word sentence in the same place that it is when you write the number so you'd have 1000 comma 240 hyphen 7 also something else to keep in mind is the only time you use the word and when you're writing a number out using words is for a decimal point for example in that 1247 if we had point six five on the end we would say one thousand comma two hundred forty seven and point six five or sixty five hundredths but that's the only time you use the word and when you're writing out a number using words let's do a practice problem let's take this word sentence basically and change that into a typical whole number that we would write using digits now when you see problems like this you may want to write out your place values just to help you remember and you see that we start with sixty million and so let's just think about that we'd have one two we'd have the tens and the hundred millions or the one millions i'm sorry we'd have those places then hundreds tens one thousands hundreds tens ones so that's how many place values we'll have and if you need to do that just to help you think about how to write this number that's a good idea to do that so let's just go ahead and go back through this sixty million we'd say sixty and then comma and notice the comma in the word sentence that goes in the same place in the whole number when we write it in digit form 225,000 so we'd say 2 2 5 and then there's that comma 888 so we say 8 8 8 and that's it there's our number 
Now practice problem F, let's go the other way. Let's take this number and write it using words. And so notice we don't have any commas in there. So the first thing we'd want to do is put the commas in the appropriate places. And the best way to do that is to start on the right hand side and just move over every three place values we would put a comma. So we say 810 comma 306 comma 000 comma. And then we can see that we have 5 billion 603,018. Now if you heard me there, I said 603,000. Sometimes I'll do that when I'm talking about the number. But like I said before, we wouldn't write it with the word and in there. The only time we use the word and is when we have a decimal point. And so let's start writing this number. 5 billion is the first thing we would write. And you can write it like a sentence. You can put a capital F for 5. and then you need a comma. Now there's nothing in the millions places, in the hundreds, the tens, or the one millions places, so you don't put anything there. We just go on to the thousands places, the hundreds, tens, one thousands places, and we have 603,000, so we just write 603,000 and Sometimes I just think I'm supposed to put a hyphen in between a six and a hundred, like six hyphen hundred. But remember, the only time you use a hyphen is numbers from 21 to 99. So we have 5,603,000, comma, nothing in the hundreds place. Then we have the 18, and so we write 18. And then we could put a period at the end too. If you need to on these problems, write out your place value. Just put some little marks down, some blank spaces basically with commas every three spaces. And that will help you remember your different place values and help you remember where to put the digits. If you're going from a word sentence to the whole number form. And then if you have a number that's already in whole number form, and there's no commas, make sure and put the commas in the appropriate places. Starting from the right side of the number, just move to the left. Every three places, put a comma. And that will help you to figure out how to write the number. Let's go on to the last part of this lesson on addition or on adding. And this is a review lesson. There's lots of things that you should already know about. We're just trying to refresh your memory here. And these review lessons are sometimes pretty long. Most of your lessons will not be nearly this long. So just hang in there a few more minutes and let's do one more thing. Let's review addition. And we have those three numbers there in that practice problem G. Let's add those together. Each of those numbers is called an add end. We add those together and the result of that addition is called the sum. So let's go ahead and get the sum for this addition problem. And we add in columns, right? You start on the right side, the farthest right column. That's the ones place for this particular group of numbers. And so we would add the one and the seven, which would be eight, plus another eight would be 16. And so we put a six in our sum area. And the one, remember that has a value of 1 times 10 or 10. So it actually goes into the tens place and we add that with the other digits in the tens place. We have 1 plus 0 plus 1 would be 2 plus 8 would be 10. And so we put a 0 here and the 1 goes there because really what we just did was add 10 plus 10 plus 80 is 100 if we think about place value. So that's why that one goes into the hundreds place now because it really has a value of 100. And now we add that hundreds column up. One plus three is four, plus two is six, plus five is 11. And now we just go ahead and write down 11. We don't carry the first one to the next place because none of our add ends have a thousands place. So we just write that number in our sum and put a comma there and I always like to put a box around the answer to distinguish the answer from the rest of the problem and there's our answer 1106 let's do one more problem this one is dealing with adding two money values together 
we do a problem like this just like we did practice problem G. Make sure the decimal points are lined up though when you do a money addition problem. Starting from the right side we add the 7 and the 5 together and so that would be 12. We bring the 2 down and we put the 1 in the next column. 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 9 that would be 14. Bring a 1 down or 4 down carry the 1 over to the 1's column and now we add 1 and 2 is 3 plus 6 is 9 and we end up with 9 dollars and 42 cents. We can put the dollar sign back down and there we have it. Now in a later lesson we'll talk a little bit more about adding numbers with decimal places but just understand right now when you're adding money values together you just line up the decimal places and add them like you do regular whole numbers. On problems like this also do not use a calculator. The purpose is for you to understand how to do addition. Now there will be some problems in this book where I say it's okay to use a calculator like geometry problems because that's not the purpose of the problem is for you to know how to do multiplication or addition. The purpose is how to apply multiplication or addition to solving a problem in geometry. But here that is the purpose is to teach you addition. So don't use a calculator for these kind of problems. It'll just make things harder for you and make math more difficult for you. Okay, well that's all for lesson one.